Hello and welcome to today's episode of Candid Conversations. Today we'll be chatting with Melanie Wattles of Baby Strokes Infant and Child Massage. Melanie is a registered nurse, a certified infant massage instructor, and a certified pediatric massage therapist. Melanie owns Baby Strokes Infant Child Massage and offers both parents and professional education um, in infant massage and newborn care. Melanie also offers home massages for children over the age of one. Melanie has worked as a parent educator for Seton Ascension Health, teaching prenatal infant massage. She has also taught infant massage to the mother, baby and labor delivery RN grads at Seton Ascension Health. Melanie has taught nurses, doulas, therapists, preschool teachers and nannies. And she has made appearances on Breakfast TV, KXAN News 36, and been given interviews on many podcasts and other social media outlets. She's passionate about working with a birth world and educating both parents and professionals about the power of infant massage. She received her CIMI certification through the International Association of Infant Massage in 2001, and she updated her skills in January of 2014, receiving her CIMI2 certification through uh, WINC Without Borders. Melanie has trained, uh, was trained by Tina Allen and received her CPMT through the Little Kids Foundation in June of 2016. Melanie is also a registered general nurse and registered sick children's nurse in the United Kingdom. Melanie has over 25 years of experience in pediatric and neonatal nursing, and she's certified in infant and child CPR. Melanie is originally from the UK, but has lived in Austin, Texas for almost 30 years. She is married and she has a son and a very loving German shepherd. So without too much ado, um, let's welcome Melanie to our episode. So thank you, Melanie, for being here today. Um, could you share with us a little bit about what sparked your interest in baby massage and how you became an expert in this specialized infant care area? Yes, definitely. And thank you, Candy, for inviting me today. I'm excited to be here. Um, I was actually um, working as a nurse. My background is in pediatric and neonatal nursing. And I was working full time in my nursing career and most professionals, nurses included, have to do uh, continuing education credits. And so I came across baby massage. And this was back in 2000, the year 2000. And so I did a CEU accredited course in infant massage and just fell in love with the concept. But at that time, I tried to do some baby massage, but it was very difficult because I was so busy with my full-time work. So I sort of put it on hold, but knowing that that concept, that mother baby or parent baby connection was was just wonderful. So I sort of fell into it um, unexpectedly really, but through CEU education. Fantastic. That's a, a great way also of, of um, sharing how important it is to continue your education no matter what you're doing. Exactly, exactly. Um, can you explain the benefits of baby massage, both for the infant and the parent, but also maybe from like from your perspective as a nurse and also from a nanny's perspective, because obviously we're not biologically related to the baby, but there are some benefits for us as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Well, there are a lot of benefits that have actually been uh, researched. So it's kind of research based information, uh, which is really very nice, too. But I think um, for me, the, the sort of number one benefit that I see is bonding, connection and communication. Um, when parents massage their babies or professionals massaging a baby, such as a nanny in, in that caregiver role, um, there's obviously a lot of communication that's going on with, with regards to touch, with regards to making eye-to-eye -eye contact with the baby, skin-to-skin um, -skin as well. Infant massage is usually done skin-to-skin, -skin, pediatric massage through clothing, but babies uh, typically uh, touch, skin to skin touch. So there's communication that way. 
And I always kind of see with parents when they are spending the time massaging their babies, it really is a focus time. So a lot of parents will sort of switch off their social media, their phones, their TVs, their computers, and really focus in on the baby, having that one-on-one -on -one contact. So that in itself really helps kind of promote that relationship between baby and parent or caregiver. Um, it's a great way as well for a parent or a caregiver who's been away from a baby to sort of come back and reconnect through touch that way as well. So it sort of gives parents, I think, kind of permission, if you like, to mm -hmm. actually spend that quality time with their babies and to not do perhaps the work they should be doing or running around doing whatever else we sort of do in the day. So um, the other thing, too, is with new babies, when parents or caregivers massage their babies, what they're doing is tuning in with the infant's cues. And, you know, babies will communicate through cues. So it could be um, facial expression. It could be body language. Uh, for example, if a baby makes that eye-to-eye -eye contact, they're usually a little bit more relaxed and, and more receptive. But I think um, something we've probably all seen is when a baby is overstimulated, they turn away, they look away. So massage is a great way for parents to kind of really tune in and understand how their baby is communicating. And just so that um, viewers and listeners understand, baby massage doesn't take an hour. It can take like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, right? Exactly. Yes, that's an excellent point. You know, if you and I go for a massage, I could be in there for two hours. Yes. I love massage. <laughs> But our little ones, their nervous systems are not fully developed and they are going to get kind of stimulated, possibly overstimulated very quickly. So you make an excellent point with it. With baby massage, it's little and often can often work best. Um, and just really parents tuning in or caregivers tuning in with the babies and, and making sure they know if the baby's had too much, showing signs of kind of perhaps overstimulation or being tired or just too much massage. So that's a very good point. Okay, thank you. And what are some of the essential tips and techniques for parents and caregivers interested in learning and practicing baby massage at home? Um, well, learning massage does not take a great deal of, of time. Um, it's good to kind of take a class from a professional. And there are lots of professionals kind of across the country and internationally as well. Just so and each professional teaches slightly differently, depending where they've actually uh, done their course. But it's good to kind of have a framework to kind of start with. So oftentimes parents will learn techniques and then they may tweak them a little bit and adjust them. But my number one um, advice would be to kind of take a class with someone and get really comfortable with the strokes and have someone that you can call on if you've got questions. But also don't stress about it. Um, infant massage should be positive. It should be something that, you know, the caregiver, the nanny, say, or the parent has time to do. Um, oftentimes, just as we talk, little and often can work really well. So don't kind of feel stressed. Oh, I've got to do massage. It's massage time. You can make it work. Everybody's routine is different and you can kind of fit it into your own specific routine. Now, when you say take a, a baby massage class, that means the, the adult and the baby are going to the class, right? It's not just the adult right. going and, and figuring it out on a doll. <laughs> exactly. Now, um, there are uh, different ways of learning uh, infant massage, and you'll find some um, teachers will actually offer classes maybe over five weeks, and it's one class a week, mother or father or both parents uh, with the baby um, over a five-week period. I do offer that, but I've also kind of adjusted the way I teach because parents oftentimes don't have time to go back every yes. week. It's quite a challenge. And so um, there are classes out there that offer kind of like a one time comprehensive class. Um, you can do a class kind of prenatally before your little one comes along. And then I always um, encourage expectant parents if they're doing that to then perhaps come to a class later on when their ba baby is ready and sort of join in with others. But you could take a group class. You could take a private class. There are lots of different ways of learning and, and taking that information. And so for somebody like myself who doesn't have a baby, but I let's say I wanted to learn infant massage, I would go to the class and what, what would I practice on? Uh, you would practice on James here. Okay, all right. <laughs> My demo dolls. And uh, I have a lot of dolls um, of 
uh, different dolls. I have some baby girls and baby boy dolls. And um, so you could practice on a doll. But you also, if I do expectant parent classes, I tend to tell parents to bring a doll, a teddy, a soft toy. Um, I've actually done some classes where the parents will sort of practice like face massage on each other. So, um, but yes, you definitely would have uh, some some baby lookalike to practice on. So. Now, I, I just saw your doll. And yes. your doll has, um, like, it looks like the intestine is kind of drawn. Yes. Yes. This is a, a onesie that I actually got. Um, mm -hmm. And when I do my sort of gas and colic tummy massage classes, this is very helpful. But this kind of shows one of uh, my favorite strokes for little tummies called the I Love You stroke. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it because it kind of shows the uh, intestinal system and the direction that we should be um, massaging in order to kind of move poop along and help expel gas and that type of thing and just generally support our, our baby's digestive system. Fantastic. So that's one of one of our tools we use, so to speak. All right. And are there specific considerations and precautions that parents should know when engaging in baby massage, particularly for infants with sensitivities or special health conditions? That's a, a great question. Um, there are some things that we teach in baby massage, um, for example, asking permission of the baby, which is critical um, for parents to do. And that is more about just checking in with the baby and making sure the baby's ready for massage and understanding if the baby shows negative cues, then you stop massaging or you change up what you're doing. But for babies that may have medical conditions, um, or allergies. Um, obviously, at this young stage, we often don't know a baby has an allergy, but what they could possibly react to are the massage oils that we use. Mm. So in that situation, I tell parents that um, it's always good to do what we call a patch test. So when we talk a little bit about what oils to use, um, some parents, you know, kind of might want to use a lotion, whatever they do, and I'm going to just demo with with James here is to do a little patch test put a little bit on the baby's wrist or you could do the ankle and just check for any redness or signs of irritation um the i mean if you're massaging a little foot or a little hand you don't need the oils but larger areas you do so definitely doing a patch test to check for any sensitivity and then really encouraging parents if their babies do have or if they have allergies, say, to avocado, that they check maybe with a pediatrician before they go ahead and use um, an oil with avocado, that type of thing. And, and likewise, if, if um, any parent has a baby who maybe have spent time in the NICU or has any sort of medical condition, you know, massage is very safe typically and is very gentle. We're not digging around and doing anything um, really intrusive, but it's always, always good to check with the pediatrician um, because obviously they know the baby's best along with the parents. So, okay. And in, in just to mention too, in some cases, especially with uh, pediatrics, we do a lot of massage for babies and children who do have medical conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it definitely can be done, but if in doubt, definitely check with the doctor. Okay, you mentioned something about uh, the massage being gentle. Do you um, do you share with parents and caregivers the amount of pressure that they should be putting on the babies? Yes, that's a very good point as well. <clears throat> I think typically um, people think it's generally thought that a sort of very light feathery pressure is what the babies would prefer. But usually that is more irritating on their nervous system. So the pressure is, it's hard to describe, it's more of a firm but light pressure. So it's not a tickly type pressure. Um, every baby is going to be different. Every baby is a different age, um, you know, different size. And so they're quite specific to kind of the pressure is specific to that baby. So I always tell parents to start out with a pressure, um, you know, for example, if we were doing a pressure here, um, start out with a sort of firm but not too firm pressure and then tune in with the baby, see if the baby's kind of relaxed and enjoying it. And I have seen this happen um, in my in-person classes where a parent will start out maybe a little bit too hard and they're doing the foot massage and the baby's moving around not comfortable. They lighten up the pressure and then the little ones just really starts to enjoy it. So pressure makes a, a big difference and that's a great point. So Fantastic. Yeah. And I have another question. Um, it's related really to age because you brought up age. So I know a lot of people are in 
you know, they're into the baby massage yes. idea. But then what happens as the baby gets older? Do, I mean, th- I know there is infant massage, but is it as popular as baby massage? Yes, definitely. So um, with massage, you can start really at any age and just kind of build up. And then um, at around sort of one, uh, you know, when your baby starts to crawl away, so it could be six months to a a year, you've got walking, um, it's a little bit more challenging, but it's still really, really beneficial. So the way I sort of look at it is with our babies, we're trying to do more calming, soothing, gentle massage, relaxing, help with sleep, that type of thing. And then maybe as your babies become you know, toddlers or preschoolers, <clears throat> we're trying to make it maybe more fun, more energetic. And in pediatrics, you know, older children, um, it's very helpful for tummy aches, for anxiety, for headaches. And one thing I'll share with you as well, with older, older children, we do a lot of back massage and we call it story massage. And, um, you know, oftentimes parents and nannies will read to children at night. And one thing that they can do is do story massage on the child's back. And that can be really relaxing, help them go to sleep, help them open up. So I think massage is something that if your child enjoys it from zero up until they can go for massage is really, really beneficial. Thank you. And you're kind of leading into my next question on how does baby massage actually contribute to the baby's overall development, including sleep, digestion and cognitive development? Yes. Um, So research has shown that babies who have um, regular massage, so maybe a little bit of massage every day or a few times a week, do tend to sleep deeper and longer. And in newer babies, melatonin, our sleep regulator, is actually produced a little bit sooner, a little bit earlier. And there are some studies now saying maybe more melatonin is produced uh, with massage. And massage also has an effect on our cortisol, on our stress hormone. So studies have shown that as babies have massage, their cortisol level, their stress hormone level decreases, as does the caregiver's level too, which is nice. But as that decreases and the baby just becomes a little bit more relaxed, I personally think that that actually helps babies too to go to sleep. A lot of times parents may do massage before bed and it just kind of relaxes the baby and gets them ready to sleep. Um, As far as digestion too, Uh, Massage has shown that um, it was a study they did and it showed that um, oxytocin, our feel good, our love hormone is actually produced when we um, offer massage to babies. And this had an effect on the digestive system. And um, the babies that were studied gained weight faster than the um, babies that didn't receive massage. And they felt it was the result of oxytocin on the digestive system, which was very interesting as well. And just as we talked about before, massage can help with, um, you know, baby symptoms of gassiness and colic and constipation as well. And then cognitively, there have been studies done, too, about sort of the touch brain connection. I'm sort of doing that with the doll here. Um, And one of the studies had shown that babies who had massage, actually their myelin, which is kind of around their nerves to help um, the nervous impulses be conducted um, to do with their nervous system that was produced sooner as well in babies that had regular touch and it kind of makes sense because touch is our first sense to develop in utero and the skin is our largest sensory organ so just a little bit of touch with our babies has a huge impact kind of on that brain body connection So, you know, there was a lot of talk at one point where people said, so if I massage my baby, will he or she be smarter? And it's like, well, I'm not sure about that, but I definitely think it really will help a lot with with child development, infant development. Yeah, which is what you mentioned. So if if somebody is considering taking a baby massage class and then doing the baby massage with their baby or their charge, what would be three tips that you would like to offer them? That's a good question. I think um, the first one is don't stress so much about the strokes. Obviously, when you learn how to do the strokes and you don't want to do any harm to your babies, obviously, but just the whole point is to just be touching our babies. If they're enjoying it, that's the most important thing. So take a class, learn what you're doing and use it kind of as a, as a guide. Um, the second thing too is 
sometimes parents get a little, and caregivers too, because days are so busy and they're a little bit stressed about how am I going to fit it all in? And I kind of look at it more like pick a time to do massage that works for you and your baby's routine and your baby. So maybe it's before a bath. Maybe it's after the bath. Maybe it's before nap time. Back massage is great to do during the tummy time, even if it's for a few minutes. So there are lots of ways you can incorporate massage into your daily routine. You could be holding the baby, massaging a little hand or foot um, without it being kind of like formal massage time. Although I do think making it part of a routine is great, but it isn't something that I think people should get very stressed about. Um, and then the third thing um, I think is just to sort of relax and enjoy it yourself, because as we all know, if we're tight and we're you know stressed about things, that's communicated to our babies and our children as well. So just set the scene if you like, if you like classical music, rock music, um, no music, if you like smells, like perhaps some nice lavender diffusing, um, if you like a quiet room, you know, just set the scene so that you yourself feel comfortable, relaxed, and that it's something that you kind of enjoy doing as well. Um, and likewise, I was just going to mention if you're, you've got nannies whose um, babies are a little bit older, more in the, you know, toddler or children, make it fun, make it playtime, sing nursery rhymes. So you can really play around with how you, you want the massage to be. I was going to say with setting the setting the scene, you're kind of also alerting the child that the massage is about to happen, right? Yes. It's always yes. the same. Yeah. Exactly. And one other thing on that that I teach in my classes is I'm going to grab this bottle of oil here. But one thing we do when we um, put oil on hands prior to the massage, I sort of mentioned about checking in with the baby, asking the permission, is it okay to massage? But we put a little bit of oil in and then can you hear that swishing yes. sound? If we do that kind of over the babies, um, the babies will learn that that sound means massage. And if massage is something positive, then they, they do. I've had parents say their little ones get so excited now when they hear this because it means massage time. So um, so that fits into with like setting the scene and telling telling your babies it's time for massage. Fantastic. You talked about asking consent of the baby. So a baby can't talk. So yeah. even though you're asking for consent, how do you know the child is consenting to the massage? That is a fabulous question. Um, with our new babies, the way to sort of do it is, um, th the other thing is how you ask it, I feel is a personal type thing because um, obviously, you're not going to say here, sign a contract, or they're not going to communicate yes or no at this stage. So it's really looking, making that eye to eye contact, doing your hands, saying you're ready for a massage, like we might sort of say you're ready for a, a diaper or an acne change. Um, so asking in the way you're comfortable and checking in and seeing if, is your baby comfortable. Um, if your baby is asleep, it's, it's a given. We're not going to massage or wake up to massage. If your little one is crying, it could be the massage might help soothe and calm them. So that's not always a sort of negative sign. The other thing is just knowing your baby's routine and what's a good time and what's not a good time to massage. And then as you start to massage, um, again, if your baby's making eye to eye contact, open body, just looks relaxed, that's great. If your little one starts to move around or frown or look away, maybe it's too much. Maybe you change up the stroke or the type of um, pressure. So it's more about reading their cues um, than anything at this age. But the one thing it does too is it does teach kind of respect and that as your babies get older, they have the right to say no if they don't want a massage and no to you know having any touch if they don't want that. Fantastic. So, um, it's good to start early on. But that was a great question because oftentimes parents look at me like, I think she's lost it. <laughs> so, yes. I think we hear a lot about, or at least in the childcare industry, you hear a lot about asking consent. But I don't think people understand that a baby is not going to say, yes, you may do that to yes. them. They can't. So it's it's ways of learning how the child is responding to what you do. Yeah. Exactly. And their cues and, and how they communicate. That's exactly right. Fantastic. So if anybody wanted to um, reach out to you and learn more about baby strokes. You can reach me through my uh, website, which is www.babystrokes.com or email me at melanie at babystrokes.com. And then I also have Instagram 
uh, which is, and it's easier written down, but baby strokes, infant massage. And on Instagram, I'm accessible all the time. A lot of times people will message me with questions. Um, but the website has a lot of information and there's also a contact section on the, on the website too. So a lot of different ways. And I do have a, a phone number uh, as well. So we can put that up. But uh, lots of different ways. So I am actually always attached to social media. So <laughs> like many of us. Yes, like many of us. Well, thank you very much for sharing all this information with us. It was really, really helpful. And um, if our listeners and viewers want to contact you, they will have all the details linked below. Perfect. Thank you, Candy. You're welcome.